floss tube. Happy Friday. It's Friday, March 2nd today. Is that right? Is it March 2nd? March 2nd. And I'm happy to have you here with me today. Welcome to my new subscribers. It seems like I've still got a few new ones, so welcome to my channel. Like I always say, there's so many floss tubers to watch these days, so the fact that you're spending a little time with me is uh, much appreciated. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I never quite know how to start some of these videos because I filmed some clips of some different things that I've done and then I can't decide if I want to put them all in one video or chop them up into several so I can't really I feel like I can't really tell you what's in this video because I don't know quite what I'm gonna put in it yet um, I haven't been doing a whole lot of stitching so I could probably put everything in one video um, my stitching update um, but I made some project bags so I was gonna do a whole separate video just showing some project bags that I made because maybe that doesn't interest you at all and then you can just move on by and you don't have to watch that video and plus I, it wouldn't make my video too long so I was thinking about having that separate and I still may it just depends on how long winded I get <laughs> so I don't have any notes with me so I'm flying by the seat of my pants with what I'm gonna talk about and I have kind of everything lined up um, so yeah Go ahead and get started. Oh, you know what? Random fact. Let's start with a random fact. I am a coffee temperature snob. The first sip of coffee is always my favorite because it's the perfect temperature. You know, right when you brew a cup of coffee and you pull it out and you pour that first one. But here's where I become snob. I have to preheat my cup. Is there anybody out there? Raise your hand if you have to preheat your coffee cup or your tea cup before you drink out of it because it just helps keep that temperature at the right temperature just a little bit longer. Which is why I found this little cup at Goodwill and it's small. All of you that drink these big huge coffee cups, the first thing I think of is how do you keep it hot long enough? I mean you pour that much coffee in unless you're guzzling it you can't, you know, it would just get too cold. So I like small coffee cups because I would rather refill my cup with nice hot water, uh, nice hot coffee from the coffee pot or brew another cup of Keurig, you know, the one cup ones, and, you know, instead of making a big pot of coffee and pouring your big pot of coffee into a big pot sized coffee cup and then it gets cold. So I don't know, enlighten me. I don't see the draw to the big giant coffee cups. I love these small ones and I found this small one and it's stoneware and it's cute. Like I said, it's hard to find an eight ounce cup anymore. Alrighty, on what my fourth drink, it's already starting to get a little bit too, too cold for me. I constantly, constantly heat my, reheat my coffee cup in the microwave. And so at any given time, ask any one of my family members, every time they open up the microwave, there's usually my cup of coffee in there because I put it in there, I heat it up and I forget about it. It's kind of weird, but let's get on to stitching because that's what you're here for. All right, let's start with my works in progress. Hoop wreath that I was going to work on and I didn't know what I was gonna put on it. I was thinking about cross stitching something, but then I changed my mind and decided I'll probably do some embroidery instead. So I had this pattern that is Oh, I found it online because there was a link to it on my, uh, one of my, I think it's my doodle stitching book. Uh, there was, if you buy the book, there's a link to go to download this for free on her website. And I just took all those motifs and traced them onto this so that I can make a pattern that fits in there. So I just kind of took the motifs that I liked and just placed them on that. So I need to transfer that to the hoop and then do some embroidery on that. And that's the plan with that. Uh, the other thing I've been working on, besides I have been cross-stitching, but while I was at Walmart, I found this. It's a jewelry box that when you open it up, there was a mirror, one of those, uh, no, it's kind of like a fake mirror, you know, almost kind of like, not really glass, but something that, you know, is just, uh, I don't know, a reflective sticky something or other. This little box was only like, I want to think it was only like four, four or five dollars. And I sanded it down, but it's got this little drawer in it. And I thought it would make a perfect little thing to keep next to me where I can keep my scissors and maybe put, um, uh, 
make it a pin cushion to put there to glue into there do some decorative stitching for the top and then you can keep um, scissors and you know whatnot things that you need for stitching you can even throw your orts in there or something like that but just a little side table box that I thought would be really cute to finish up so I bought some of this which I've never used before chalk paint that I always hear everybody talking about and um, I was trying it on the bottom a little bit to see if I can roughen it up. So I did one coat, sandpapered it off, put another coat on and didn't do anything with it yet. But I'm going to kind of sand that down and see um, what to do with that. So just playing around, never, never really um, done much with a wood box before. But I think this, when I was doing the Altoid tins and I was kind of distressing them and using different scrapbook papers or, you know, stuff like that. Mod Podge, I can do something with that. And um, while I was at it, so my finish, that I'm trying to do my finish every month. Now, I don't know if I've already showed you this in another part of the video, but if not, this is a little Altoid tin. But the reason I finished that, this is one of those little tiny ones. I finished it because this little bird, a Just Nan bird that I cross-stitched a while ago, it had been done, the stitching had been done on it for a while and I just needed to assemble it and turn it into the little bird. Now when she shows in the pattern, the front of the pattern, it shows it sitting on a little needle case that you can buy that has a little nest with some eggs on it. And I was inspired to finally finish mine because I was watching Jen over at uh, Jen's Stitching Niche and she was showing all the gorgeous finish she has. As a matter of fact, that kind of inspired me to try something with one of these boxes too because um, she's just done some really creative stuff. If you haven't checked her out, you should definitely go check her out. I'll link her below. Um, especially the video where she shows she went to a finishing retreat and she just did the most amazing finishes. Um, she had a just Nan bird that wasn't this one, but it was one similar to that that she finished. And she said, same thing. She had it stitched and it just needed to be assembled. And it was sitting in her stash for like two years. So that's kind of like mine. I don't know. I've had this easily a year or two. And she said, oh, it just took 20 minutes to finally finish it. So I decided to grab mine out and finish it. And yeah, it didn't take me 20 minutes. It took me more like an hour because I had to fiddle with those legs. <laughs> and he has a little berry in his mouth. If you look and see, so cute. But yeah, stitching it together, it doesn't look all that nice. But yeah, I... I deviated from the instructions and every time I do that and then I wonder why I get into trouble so in the long run it ended up being really cute but he doesn't like to stand and I thought okay he needs something permanent to stand on something magnetic so I had this Altoid tin sitting around and it, I do keep old uh, needles needles that have been used but they're not bad enough to throw away I keep them in here and I thought you know what I'm gonna do like what I was doing with the other Altoid tins last summer and I thought I'm just going to do some scrapbook paper, do some Mod Podge, a little bit of painting, add some bling to it, and I stuck a magnet on the inside of that. So now when I set my little birdie on top, he's got to be lined up with the magnet. See? He has a little perch, a little blingy perch to sit on. I got the stuff off of there so that I don't shake you every time I do it. Uh, let's talk about first a little finish that I did. So do you remember I had this little box that I bought at Walmart. It was a little jewelry box and I think I had started painting it in my last video. I was going to use the chalk paint. Oh, I got my little, I was already used to store stuff. It's not done. Um, whoops, whoa, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, I finished painting this. Okay, you remember it had a little mirror in it, a little plastic mirror, and the little drawer. So I used the chalk paint. I haven't really done anything to it. I think I started to play a little bit with sanding it, um, but I I'm, I'm, don't don't hold me to it. But I might film a video on me doing what I'm going to do with this, even though I only have a rough idea but I think it's going to be pretty cute. So I decided what I'm going to use to stitch on the top is this pattern that I got from Hands On Design. She showed it in one of her videos. Hi, Kathy. I don't know if you watch my videos, but just in case you stumble across mine, this is the cutest pattern. And it says, stitching is my heart's desire. And it comes with also the little, 
a little scissor fob that you can make with it. And when she showed it on her video a while back, I don't know which video it is, but she said that she showed her finish exactly like how it shows in this picture. And she said that she had had some of that fabric and finishing supplies left over. So she made some finishing kits and she said she only had about 30 of them and you had to go to her website to order it. And before they were gone, because when they were gone, you know, I don't know that this fabric isn't still available somewhere, but her little pre-made kits were going to be gone. So I ordered two because <laughs> I wasn't sure I would mess something up and would need more. So I thought just as insurance, I would get two of them. So this is what the little finishing kit looks like. And it comes with that fabric and just a little bit of ribbon and some backing fabric. So I thought instead of doing what she did and making that adorable little scissor holder and scissor fob, I thought it would be really cute to take these, these fabrics. Um, well, this is kind of what it looks like and this is the coordinating fabric. I thought that that would be really cute to um, stitch that design. Well, let me show you the stitch design. So here, um, this is the finished design that I made and it's square. And so, okay, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. So anyway, what I was gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add probably this to the top and bottom and where I'm going with that, and I'm gonna take the drawer out of this because inevitably when I flip this over, it's gonna fall out because it's fallen out on me quite a few times. So I don't know, what do you think guys? I was gonna take this and I was gonna put it on the top here like that. So let's just imagine for a moment, will you, that it will look something like this. I'm going to stitch this fabric to this top and bottom. Yeah, probably a little bit shorter there like that and do like a flat finish like how Vanna does with the, you know, over the cardboard and maybe with a little bit of padding and that's going to go on the top of the box. So then I was thinking I would take, you know, like this coordinating fabric and use, you know, uh, maybe wrap it around the sides maybe use some pinking shears, some decoupage. I really don't know where I'm going with it. All, all I know is I'm gonna use these supplies to somehow do a finish on this box. Now, because this is chalk paint and it needs to have, I guess, some type of something over it because it just rubs off, I'm gonna just use decoupage on that. But then for the inside, I thought, well, what can I do? So she has the little coordinating scissor fob pattern that looks like this right there. I thought, okay, I'm gonna take that design and sort of stitch something that will fit on the inside of this box. I have a toothpick in there. This came with a little bit of a little mirror um, that I took out. It was just one of those kid mirrors that's not really a mirror. It's kind of just a, you know, like a funny mirror kind of thing. So anyway, I pulled that out. And what I'm going to do is I stitched this. I sort of measured what that was. And I took her scissor fob little motifs and I sort of just made up something with those and stitch something sort of oblong like that, the size I needed. I'm going to finish that. I don't know how to do it yet, but it would be something like you do with the tarts where you have the, the cardboard on the back, the mat board on the back, but then I want this to puff out, like be definitely like a pin cushion, a pin keep. And then I'm going to put that right there. Obviously I'll straighten it up when I do it. So then you'll have kind of the design on top You'll open it up and you'll have a pin cushion on the inside and then you can keep all of your little sewing notions in it. You can keep some scissors in there or if you're sitting by, you know, maybe you can have, a, you know, some orts in there, whatever. We, we stitchers, we would know what to do with this. So that's my plan. I may just do it and not film it and I may film it because like I said, it's just kind of a rough guesstimate of what I'm doing now. So yeah. That's what I'm gonna do with that and stay tuned because one way or another, that should be finished by my next video. Okay, let me move this. I wasn't gonna use this table to shake you. But let's keep going here. All right, works in progress. Well, this won't take long. I've only worked on, well, okay, I shouldn't say I worked on, I only worked on one thing because I actually did the, the Kathy Haberman hand-on design pattern too.
I have worked, other than that, exclusively on my Marjolaine Bastin Four Seasons that you have seen if you have been watching me a pretty amount of time. And here is how it's looking so far. So, can't tell if the lighting is good on that. So, last time you saw it, I, I believe I had the whole top border and all of this done to about there. And I had all of that done. So since then, the new thing that you haven't seen now, the new motifs are, I think I had the bunnies done. Did I have the bunnies done last time? I don't remember. But let's get a close up. So we've got those bunnies. Can you see it? And the little hedgehog, so adorable. And that bench, that bench took me a long time. I don't know why. It's not that big, but it just seemed like that green and brown kind of, it's like the first thing on this uh, pattern that seems to really take a while. I don't know why, it's just really not that big, you know, and I loved it. And then we've got, oh, and her name, and then this. This is probably my favorite so far, that little field mouse with the little apple. Isn't that cute? I just love this pattern. It's getting ready to do, there's some seed pods gonna be here, then there's the mushroom that I love right there, um, some more, and then all that will be left are the big, you know, there's gonna be a big motif back up in this corner, so obviously this is spring, then there's gonna be a watering can with strawberries here for summer. Uh, oh, and I did the, also those, are those snowdrops? Is that what? fiasco here sorry uh, those are those snowdrops guys I think they are I don't I've never I've never planted snowdrops but I think I've seen enough pictures of them to know that those are snowdrops so you're gonna go down into the winter part right here and then the fall over down in this corner here so I have quite a bit to go still um, I'm really I'm really having some inner struggles with this with what to do with this pattern because I'm still loving it and I still want to stitch on it but there's something that just bugs me about knowing that I've spent the first two months of the year only working on one project because say for instance I don't work on anything else and I continue working on this and it takes another two months to do I'll have spent the first four months of 2018 only working on one project and I don't know why I struggle with that because it's the same amount of stitching it just feels like less because all of my you know, all of my stitches are going into one piece. And so I'm just having this inner struggle with, do I start working on some of my other things? Or, you know, I, I don't know. It just feels like getting less done when all that you get done is one project, but I still really want to work on it. Now, I know a lot of you will say, well, why don't you do a rotation? But I can't do a rotation. I just don't, I'm just not wired that way to do a rotation. What will happen if I do a rotation is I'll put this away, I'll pick up something, and I know me because I know I've lived with myself my whole life and I know that if I put this down and start working on something else unless it's real small like that Kathy Haberman design you know if 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 I put this away I don't think I'll pick it up again anytime soon and it will become one of my you know works in progresses that I don't want to say UFO it'll just become one of my many works in progresses that I absolutely love and had intended on going back to and just never did because I, my eye caught something else and I move on and we always want to stitch the thing that that's new to us so I just really don't know like so I keep working on it but there are some there's a sal that actually started uh, March 1st and lots of people have been talking about it the um, Amy hi Amy from Amityville um, Amityville yeah, it was just Amityville uh, who has a, who started doing a floss two video and um, Maui Jen oh she's not Maui Jen anymore just Jen the dark side stitcher they started a Facebook group called bewitching stitches bewitching stitches is that it guys um, I'll link it all below um, you have to answer three questions to get into the group but they're easy questions and you know they're just kind of trying to weed out the riffraff for that group and make sure that it's a good fit for you so they started a sal on March 1st an Edgar Allan Poe sal and 
there's a hashtag I'll put here because I don't remember it off the top of my brain because I didn't even remember I was going to talk about that. Sorry, gals. So well, long story short, what I'm saying is that I want to join that sow. Well, I didn't really have an Edgar Allan Well, I did. Okay, I had an Edgar Allan Poe pattern that I wanted to do, the one that actually Jen is stitching when it was in the Just Cross Stitch. And it's a Nevermore pattern. And I've always wanted to stitch up, but it's a little too big. I thought that I was going to just do something small. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to go do the Lizzie Kate Nevermore because that's really small. And I figured I could do that, still participate in the style, and it wouldn't take me away from my Marjolin Bastin. Well, yeah, Lizzie Kate. You can't get her patterns right now. So <laughs> I thought, I'm not even going to try. Um, I don't even own a Lizzie Kate pattern. Is that weird? Am I the only one out there that doesn't own a Lizzie Kate pattern? And I don't really feel the need to go out and buy one. Now, if I were to buy one, I would buy that Nevermore one just because it's cute. And I'll probably buy it if it happens to fall into my lap. But I'm certainly not going to. I'm going to wait until the mad dash cools down a little bit. Um, I know a lot of you love Lizzie Kate. And believe me, I love her designs. I've actually wanted to stitch a lot of them in the past. But I just never bought one and never stitched one. And um, so it's always sad though when a good designer just decides to retire i mean i wish her all the best in her retirement because she deserves it but yeah it's like but you're not going to design for us anymore so wow can i ramble um let's move on um so yes i, I don't know um my plans i have a couple of other things that i feel like there was another I want to talk about. Um, hold on. Oh yeah, this. So, well, we'll just talk about haul because, like I said, most of it I don't have. But one I do have is I did purchase Cinnamon Stars. I have been wanting to stitch this for years. Uh, yeah, easily a couple of years for sure. This is by Plum Street Samplers. I'm really, really being drawn to Plum Street Samplers patterns now. As a matter of fact, I just ordered another one from her. And I don't remember what it is, but I'll show it in my next video. Oh, I didn't even finish talking about... I can't keep my train of thoughts straight. I didn't even finish talking about the whole Edgar Allan Poe sal. I ordered a pattern for it. I ended up ordering the Raven by Lottie Da. And I don't have it to show you. Um, but I'll show it to you in my next video. I'm not the only one stitching that. It's a really popular pattern. And that's what I ordered. It's going to be arriving shortly. And I ordered another Plum Street Samplers. I can't remember the name of it. I never saw it before, but I loved it. And the other two things I ordered were Ida May Crow and Ira May Crow from The Good Housewife. And that's those are another two. I saw those couple of years ago and have wanted to stitch them and then I put them in my cart when she re-released them and then I thought those are gonna go away those are gonna go away and I'm gonna you know miss the boat on that so I did finally order those and would love to stitch those so I have a lot of things I want to stitch so I am I haven't even been looking to see what's coming out at market because I don't want to be enabled I already have I already have what I what I want to stitch so okay let's move on did I finish my thought no, I didn't. Cinnamon stars. Yes, I want to stitch this. Um, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Bendy Stitchy. I know at one point you said you wanted to stitch this. Uh, you were going to have a birthday star, but I know you got like all kinds of things that you're working on now. Uh, just let me know when you want to start this. I'll start this with you if you still want to do it. I mean, who knows? We can do it next year. It doesn't really matter to me. Like I said, I've been waiting on this, waiting to stitch this for, you know, a couple of years already. So it doesn't really matter. I'm not like dying to start this right now. I have a lot of things that I'm working on. So, but yes, Cinnamon Stars, Michelle Bendy, and anybody else that wants to stitch this, just uh, let me know. We can start a sow because it's not like I'm, I, I have to write down all the sows I'm in. Literally, I still got that Fox sow I was in, the Marjolin Baston sow. I'm going to do the Edgar Allan Poe sow. Uh, yeah, I know there's more out there. I know if I'm working on a sow with you, I haven't forgotten about you. I just haven't written it down. And when I see the project, I'll know. Okay, let's talk briefly about embroidery. My year of stitches, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm at with my one year of stitches. This is an embroidery challenge that I'm doing for myself to sort of teach myself some embroidery. And it's, the concept is to do a stitch a day, every day of the year. And I started off good in January, did all this, started to 
pilfer out on my everyday thing when I started working on this because I think I, I don't know, I just toward the end. So February comes and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna find a nice pattern to make it easy on myself. So I picked this heart pattern, which is free. I'll try to remember to link it below if anybody's even interested. I mean, I don't know. I know a few of you out there are embroidery, but this is easy. If you do free heart pattern sampler and do a Google search for it, this will come up like everywhere. But I think it's called the spruce that actually has the original pattern. So, and actually I changed it. I, I actually started following theirs, but there was not very many variety of stitches in here. So I actually ended up doing a, a bunch of my own. But I thought, okay, I'll do this heart on the first day of February. And then, you know, between each one of these lines, you know, I'll have 28 different days worth of stitches and it'll just be a no brainer. I'll just do a strip a day. Well, I started off okay at the beginning of the month and then ended up skipping a few days. And so I only really worked on this heart three times. So I pretty much stitched the whole thing in like three different sessions, but at the end of the month, I ended up in the same spot, which is a completed heart. And I accomplished what I wanted to because I did some different stitches. And so I'm like, I had posted on, on Instagram, I call it a win because yeah, I just got there a little bit differently, but in the end I still practiced some stitches and got a little sampler. So as you can see, it's March 2nd and I haven't put in any stitches yet. So March is already going the same. I'm gonna move the hoop over to here and no, I'm probably not gonna make it in the shape of a shamrock. I think I'm just gonna <laughs> just find some really unique fun stitches that I really wanna know how to do and do, you know, I think that this is gonna just end up being my year long embroidery sampler. And I'm just gonna stitch on it when I feel like stitching on it and I'm gonna try to stitch on it quite a bit every month and the whole idea is that when I want to learn a new stitch I'll stitch it on here to practice it and then you know when I'm done I'll just have this big old towel filled with embroidery that I don't know what I'm going to do with other than look at it and say oh yeah I did that stitch once let me go back because that's what samplers are for right just go and look and say how did I do that and what does that look like so all right I'm going to go ahead and and move on to um, some stitching gifts that I received um, because this may be the end of this video and it may not, but either way, then my bags will be tacked onto the end of this. So I forgot to say this in my last video, I was gifted, uh, from my friend, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. At, she's a local stitcher here at my stitch in and she thought of me when she acquired these patterns. These, these aren't just patterns, but they're kits, Bent Creek. And they're actually the kits. They come with the buttons, the floss, and everything. And I can't remember Melissa if you where you said you got these. If um, I don't know if you got a deal on them or got them free or something like that. But anyway, she passed them on to me. She said I thought of you, and I just think that that is just so cool. So I still haven't stitched the other pattern you gave me. Hello summer. Oh, that's on my list. I I've got to stitch that. I oh. Time, guys, we need more time. Isn't this cute though? These will take like a day to stitch and I have all the stuff. There is no excuse why I have not done this yet. So this is called Bluebird Cottage. And this one here is called Coral Winged Owl. So cute. I don't know why I haven't stitched these yet. I know why. Margolin Bastin happened, that's why. And Black Cap Chickadee, chirp cute so I definitely definitely am going to stitch these thank you so much Melissa for thinking of me I really appreciate it and I was also if you watch Cindy's cross stitch hi Cindy uh I talked about her in my last video how I was binge watching her and she was binge watching me and she was enabling me with all of her gardening and and all of her fantastic finishes and um she wanted my address so I'm thinking came in the mail. Now she showed in her video what she had given me, but in case you don't watch her video and you want to see, I want to show you the lovely gifts that she sent me. She had a little tutorial where she takes fabric that she likes and just turns it into hoop finishes and makes little ornaments out of them. And I think it is the cutest thing ever. And she backs it with felt. I need to see how she did that. It looks so cool on the back. I mean, yeah. I left my back open on mine, but I really like the way the felt looks. So that just looks amazing. And the little chickadee on the watering can, I love it. Thank you so much, Cindy. So that's one of them. She made me another one. 
with this fabric right here, a little black cap chickadee. Also finished it, the felt on the back. And just these tiny little hoop finishes. And she shows how she does it in her video and it's super quick and just such a cool way when you have fabric that you wanna use up and, and you like the little part of the fabric and you can make these little, or, uh, little ornaments or you know things to hang around the house. So cute that and then she used some of the same fabric for those that I just showed and she made this little zippered pouch right here. Isn't that cute? And on the inside it's got some of the other coordinating chickadee fabric but so adorable little pouch and a bigger pouch right here with this fabric and a nice coordinating red zipper so it's got the bird fabric on both sides. So these are both just two little notions bags for sewing on the go or whatever you want to use it for. And then she put the other fabric inside there, the coordinating one with the watering can and the birdhouses. So, so cute, Sandy. I love it. But that was not all. She sent me this gorgeous little card with this watercolor hummingbird on it, which is absolutely beautiful and a nice handwritten note inside. And then she wrapped up, and this is, this is my favorite right here, so I'm saving it for last. She had it wrapped up in a little jewelry box. She made me this little cardinal necklace. Is that the cutest thing ever in this tiny little hoop? I love it so much. It's so cute. With this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> with this nice little uh, chain. Now, if you've watched Cindy's cross stitch video, you will see that she made herself a cross stitched necklace that's just beautiful. Um, I'm not so sure that I could pull off wearing cross stitch jewelry like she can. I'm just, I don't have a lot of, <laughs> I mean, just it goes to show you, I've had these same earrings in and they're cheap, and I've had these same earrings in for like years. I never even change my earrings and I wear my wedding ring and that's about it when it comes to jewelry. But this is so gorgeous and she put the felt on the back and she of course gave me permission to use it as an ornament if I wasn't going to wear it as a necklace. So I don't know but I'll, I'll give it a try you know and see. It's adorable whatever whether I wear it or hang it it's so cute and I will always think of Cindy when I look at it. It's just adorable. And I went out and I bought some of these little hoops because are they like the cutest thing ever? Yeah, I think I paid like 97 cents at Hobby Lobby for two of them, a, a two pack. So cute, yeah, well, I don't know. I think with the right blouse, I could maybe pull it off or even a brooch. She knows that my dream is to see a cardinal someday. <sighs> but for now, I'll just Look at this when I want to see my cardinal. So thank you so much, Cindy. It's so cute and so tiny. Yeah, did you stitch that? Oh no, I was gonna say you might even stitch that over one, but it's not, it's over two, but it's so tiny. <sighs> Makes me want to see spring, even though cardinals aren't really a spring bird. I think of them more as winter, but yeah, I'm ready for spring, guys. To me, it's not spring until I see a robin. When I see the first robin in my yard, then I know it's spring. And I have not seen a robin yet, so. When I see one poking around for worms in the grass, then that's that's all I need to say spring is here. If this is the end, then I'm going to um, say stay tuned for another video that has my project bag. If not, um, I'm gonna tack that on to the end here. If you stick with me to the end, there might be a little surprise waiting for you, if you care, so just saying. Okay guys, let's talk project bags. I made some. I made some project bags. Yeah, there's like 20 of them, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, okay, I did. I fell down the rabbit hole of project bags. Um, I decided to take the bull by the horns and say, I'm gonna make a project bag because thanks to Michelle, hi Michelle at Farm Grill, Michelle. When you showed your video with all your project bags, I was just like, I was drooling, saying, I gotta do that. I have to make some project bags like Michelle because I could just see all the different fun fabrics you were doing and you whipped out so many of them. I thought it can't be too hard. Look at how many she made. So I 
I blame you for this, Michelle. I'm going to insert a video here because it was not smooth going. It was not smooth going at all. Good morning, guys. It's Monday morning, February 12th, and I just wanted to just most likely be inserting this clip of just some of the things that I've been working on this past weekend. Uh, I've been talking about wanting to make my own project bags for quite some time and it's just kind of a pain because I have to get all my sewing stuff out and this is my kitchen table and it has a tablecloth on it because the puzzle is still under there and it hasn't been worked on since before Christmas so yeah we gotta get back to that. Um, so yeah this is just kind of my setup here in my kitchen table, my sewing machine and just some of my old quilting stuff and I wanted to show you what I've been up to so far. So, I've been following Dina's tutorial over at Making Life Count. Hi Dina, I don't know if you watch my channel or not, but um, I've been loving your tutorial, but I haven't quite mastered it yet. So, this is the first completed bag I did, and here is my little Starbucks zipper pull. Well, it's not, I don't think it actually says Starbucks on it, I think it just says coffee. Um, but yeah, I think that's so cute. So this is the fabric I've been wanting to use for a while and the, so yeah, I need to perfect. This was my first one and there's a lot of things I would change about it. Um, I didn't really, not about the tutorial, believe me, the tutorial's fine. It's just me. I've just been, you know, I don't sit at my sewing machine much these days, so I'm a little bit rusty and just because you know how to quilt doesn't mean you know how to sew other things. It's kind of like if you can drive a Jeep back and forth to the store doesn't mean that you can take that Jeep and go four-wheeling with it and that's kind of how I feel when I make something besides quilts so I'm it's it's a work in progress um, what the problem I was having and I just need to work on it is if you can see when this lays it kind of has this ripple here I'm not quite sure if it's maybe the it could be the the zipper that I'm using I just bought they bought all this stuff at Walmart, so you know I don't know if they're quality of zippers. If there's, I'm sure there's better qualities of zippers, but I maybe should have ironed the zipper first. So I'm going to try that. You know, this is just minor stuff. Yes, it's a perfectly usable bag. I'm sorry, I should show you what the back looks like. So there's the back. Here's the front. And yeah, so the problem I'm still working on right here is trying to minor my quarters a little bit better, make the zipper lay flatter because then when I sewed this part around. You can see how it's kind of rippling there and it's forcing me to have to sew a pucker into there. So yeah, the top I'm just, I haven't quite mastered that yet. And this was the next bag I made here. And you can see the same thing happened. You know, I just, I get this, when I sew the zipper in, it's just doesn't lay flat. Oh, me and zippers, I'm, I'm intimidated by them because I just can't get them to work. This one I didn't miter the corners on. And what I'm gonna do uh, just to finish it off a little more is do another edge another row of top stitching all the way around the edge To get it to lay flat. So I was just kind of trying to compare do I like the mitered or the non mitered And I don't think it really matters in the end. So yeah, I think the miter looks a little bit nicer But maybe when I top stitch this so there's that and then this is the back side of that one and well, there is to say about that I have another one I'm gonna do another coffee one this is the only color zipper I had but I'm gonna do another one try to get it to lay a little bit flatter and then I've got this one in progress right here put it in better light so this one is the co coordinating one to this um, so it's going to have that fabric on the back the, the bigger print and then a little strip of the smaller print in front so I've already got that pinned to the final I'm gonna be putting that zipper in I ironed the zipper so I think that's gonna make a big difference so we'll see and then the other fabric I bought to try one more is this fabric right here that's got these gorgeous peacocks on it. And this was, once again, a Walmart fabric. Not the highest quality of fabric, but for this, perfectly fine. Oop, it is. So it's going to have the, the P 
peacock will be the outer fabric, this will be the inner fabric, and then I'll have a blue zipper. So we'll see. I think that's going to look nice. And yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Hi guys, it's been about a week since I last spoke to you about me making my project bags and this has turned into what I call the Pyeongchang 2018 Olympic bag making session that I've been doing because that's pretty much all I've been doing during the Olympics is making bags and well, trying to get better at making bags I should say and watching the Olympics. I've hardly picked up my stitching although I have done some because when I get a little frustrated with the bag making and the zippers and the puckers um, then I do a little bit of stitching, but each bag is getting better. Anyway, I'll show you. I've got a whole bunch prepped and ready to go, and uh, I'll let, let me turn the camera around and show you what I got going on. I got about seven bags ready to go, and these are, so I'm going to make, did I show you guys? I think I showed you I made one of the peacock uh, ones, because when you get the cuts of fabric, you can pretty much make two of each kind of bag. So I'm going to make another peacock bag, and then I found this fabric here, which is dragonflies, sort of a, like a mint green, dragonflies and butterflies. And I should, these are, I have, okay, so these are gonna be the outer fabric. So I got that one, then I got some gardening fabric, and then I got these birds, and those look like apples. And these are gonna be my, so I have enough to make pretty much two of every kind. So these are gonna be the linings, and I have them all, the fusible web all put together. They're all cut down to size. I'm ready to go. I got all my strips sewn. Uh, zippers. I don't have them all here, but I do have more zippers. Got all my vinyl cut. And since we last talked, I did pick up some wonder clips and some wonder tape, which is making my job much easier. Actually, I haven't actually used the wonder tape yet. I did it on a practice bag. Here's just a little 8x8 bag that's got this fabric on the back right there. And yes, Everything is coming together much easier, much better now. My miters are looking a little better. Certainly enough to where I'm totally happy with them. Um, I still get this puckering right here. I just cannot get that to stop, but I'm just going to get over it and just be okay with it. It just doesn't really matter. Got a little pucker right... Oh, does that pucker? No. Um, I've started... One thing I'm doing just a little bit different than Dina, just because I was having such trouble with it when I was doing my zippers, is I've decided to add an extra strip equivalent to this. I've been doing at the top also, and then when I wrap the backing around to do the front. And if you haven't made one of these, you might not know what I'm talking about, but you know, when you bring the, the backing fabric around to the front and do the binding, I found it was easier to do on fabric as opposed to the zipper. So. That's just one thing that I've changed a little bit. It certainly didn't need to be changed. It just was making it easier for me because I'm incompetent, I guess. So, yeah, that's it's definitely looking better. And so, yeah, I'll I'll uh, continue watching the Olympics and making my vinyl fronted bags and uh, check in with you and I'll show you them all when I get them done. Uh, this is a little iron, a little craft iron that I've had that I've been using and it just really doesn't get very hot and doesn't get a lot of the wrinkles out of the fabric. So um, my husband saw me struggling with it and he said, you need a new iron. So he got on Amazon and did some research and ended up ordering this cute little iron for me. So it's a little bit smaller here side by side. So this is a small iron. So compared to a regular size iron that would be probably here, then this is a small iron. And then, well, you can kind of see on my little measurements there that, yes, it's, it's pretty small. So two, four, six, about seven inches. And this little guy right here is really tiny. Yeah, so, well, the actual ironing part is about five inches, it looks like. And really cute. It's called Steam Fast. I can't remember who makes it, but yes, I'm really happy with this. And it's got a, like a little Teflon iron plate there as opposed to the middle one there. So anyway, I like it. I'm happy with it. It seems to be working much better. It has a little steam feature on it and it's small and portable. It comes with its little bag and comes with a little water filling, a little dainty little water filling cup. So yeah, that's my exciting new purchase and it makes ironing my fabric much better. Okay guys, so 
you watched, well, I don't really remember where that ends, where my clips ended or what I talked about. So if I repeat myself, hopefully I'll edit myself out. So the way it had started is, yes, you saw that it started with, with my bag. So I'm just quickly going to show you these. Yes. Now I showed you that. So these were my first two horrible. Don't look too close. They're, they're like, I'm actually probably going to rip out the stitching and kind of reassemble them together because I've perfected my technique a bit. So I've got the two coffee bags. I ended up taking the charm off, my little Starbucks charm off the zipper because it was too heavy and I think that I like them better without anything on the zipper pull. Um, they're just, they lay a little bit flatter with each other. So I got the two coffee ones that look like that on the back. Oh, I did the coffee upside down on that one. Oh, I'm telling you, these, I've got to reassemble those. Uh, and then I should have started with some of these other fabric. These all kind of look the same because they're from some coordinating fabric. So I showed you, there's that, which just has sort of the bigger print on the back. This one that has, oh yeah, I had to piece that one because I ran out of fabric. So more of that same kind of fabric here. Yeah, I was getting really tired of that fabric. So got those three bags. Then I decided to go with a gardening theme. This garden here that has this green fabric and I didn't realize until I got home that this glitter, that this inner lining fabric has glitter in it. <laughs> so yeah, there was like just very fine amounts of glitter. I'm like, where is this glitter coming from? And it's actually kind of embedded in the fabric, but it sheds. So yeah, I wasn't too thrilled with that just because then you put stuff in the bag and it ends up with glitter all over it. But hey, who, who can't use a little glitter in their life? So gardening. And because I can make two, I can make two with that fabric. This one I ended up using a different fabric um, as the lining. Then I was not finding a lot of bird fabric that I liked, but I did find this one. Now my Joann's just didn't have a selection. So I have looked on fabrics.com and um, Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch actually showed some bird fabric that she has. And I think that I'm going to get that, uh, get order some of that on fabric.com. But I made two of these, but um, they have different linings on them. So kind of a peach there. Oh, and so let me, well, I'll talk about that after I'm done showing them all. So then I think I showed already my two, the two peacock ones there that are pretty much identical to each other there. Then I went with a butterfly one here and here. This one, um, I, another floral one that I made here that's just got some dark fabric. I was trying to, you know, I started to think I don't necessarily know if I wanted to have a theme to them because, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, only something that has flowers can go in here or, you know, I don't know. I, I struggle with it because I don't necessarily, you know, obviously when you're done with your whip, you need to be able to use the bag for something else. I actually probably have enough whips to fill all these bags, to fill most of them anyway. I have to go count my whips. This one, because I'm always usually stitching something Halloween, I decided to go with this. It's a sugar skull. just some black in there that's cute so that can be good for any kind of Halloween or when I work on my uh, Edgar Allan Poe sow. Here's another fabric, bird fabric that I found on Clarence at Joann's. I'm not a big fan of purple and blue but you know that was like two dollars a yard so I ended up getting that, making two of them. Uh, yeah they're identical. Uh, then we went with some boxes there. There's the front. Made two of those identical to each other because why not have two if you can, right? This one, oh, this has got to be one of my favorites. Look at that box print. The front there. Did a green zipper because there's some green colors in there and because my local Walmart was running out of 14 inch zippers because guess who is buying them all? <laughs> yeah, me. So I had to start going with the 18-inch the um, zippers and the 22-inch zippers because I was buying all of them. So made two of those identical to each other. Um, I had to practice 
so I'm going to show you just in this little one. I made this little one here with just some scraps that I had because, yeah, I was trying to practice mitering my corners, um, but this is like a perfect little bag, and the reason I made one too is because my son, who was doing the English paper piecing, he's like, oh, Mom, can you make me a bag to put those in? He's not making them anymore, but he <laughs> he was with me at Walmart, and I said, well, pick out some fabric that you want. So he picked out this fabric, this, what is that called, hound's tooth or something like that? And I said, okay, find you know a coordinating one for the inside. And so he picked out a little bunch of fat quarters, and I said, oh, those two aren't really going to go together. I mean, they're totally, completely clashing, but they work. I put this together and I thought, I really like that. So I ended up buying more and I'm going to make me a big bag that looks like that. But I think it's great. And his little paper, his little hexy flowers can fit right inside there. Like that. Even though he's not making them anymore. But I'll show you. How many did he have the last time? So he had this box here. And the little mushroom one. These were all coordinating, uh, came with like a coordinating set of, of fat quarters. The hedgehog. There. Yeah. I still only made that one that I showed you in my last video. This one. And then he took some of some fabric I had up in my stash and made that one because he ran out of the other one. And then this one he was making with some other fabric I had in my stash, and that one's not complete, and he sort of stopped and, and fizzled out, like we all do, you know, we lose interest in something, move on to something else. So, um, but just like me, he usually comes back and revisits that stuff, so I'm impressed, I mean, I have, I have nothing to say about that, I only made one, and he just took to it like crazy, and he has them all, they all fit nicely in this little bag. So, pretty cute, huh? I know, I'm all about the bags. I'm, I'm approaching the end of my bag making session though. I think that I'm, I'm finishing up. Um, I need to put my, yeah, it's been so fun sewing again though. I mean, I really just have enjoyed sewing. Again, working with my sewing machine, it's just, yeah, it's been fun. Kind of brought back old days and old memories in my old quilting days. Um, but, I think I have enough bags for now, yeah. The zipper issue, I seem to have fixed that for the most part. Some some of the fabrics go wonky, but um, I noticed that my sewing machine, because I got out the manual, and my sewing machine actually has an adjustment that you can adjust how hard the presser foot, the presser foot tension is, and you can loosen it a little bit so that it's not, you know, gripping the fabric so much. So. I started using, you know, once I did that, I started getting, you know, way less puckering, actually hardly any at all. So if you stuck with me to the end, while I was at Walmart looking for fabric, I ended up finding some cute novelty fabric that made me think of my little fellow floss tubers out there. And one of them is this. I am not a huge Disney fan, but I saw this fabric and I said, oh, I have so many, there's so many floss tubers that love Disney. I have to make a Disney bag. And maybe I made two. I might keep one for myself, but I would like to give away this bag if you are interested in it. <laughs> it's, I don't know, for one thing, I'm just going to say, if you have an issue with vinyl, because it smells a little bit like vinyl, if you have an issue with that, then you probably don't want this bag, you know, but, you know, if you don't have an issue with the smell of vinyl and you, you know, you like this bag and you think it's cute, it's, yeah, it's really cute. Um, <laughs> I'll give this to you. So, let me tell you how much it is, because maybe you're, I mean, not how much it costs, but how, what uh, measurement it is. It's actually, so the inside measurement, it will hold something 11 inches that way, and just a little over 12, about 12 and a quarter going long ways. So, you know, it's not going to hold a big 11 by 11 Q-snap, I, I don't think, because it just, yeah, it probably won't fit that. So, anyway, that's what size it is. So. I ended up seeing some Star Wars fabric. So I made a couple of Star Wars. Yeah, some of the motifs are upside down because that's just how the bag is and I couldn't decide if I should do it that way or that way. So, 
Star Wars bag and I realized right before I went to film this video that I cut the measurements wrong and so it's a shorter bag. Can you see how much shorter it is? So I may make another bag that I would like to give away as the Star Wars bag, but it's smaller. So I don't know. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what I was thinking, but I made it like an, almost an inch and a half shorter, maybe even two inches shorter. So I don't know. If you want a Star Wars bag or a Disney bag, leave me a comment below and just make it simple saying I would love to have that Disney bag or I would love to have that Star Wars bag or I would love to have either of those bags and I'll pick two winners and maybe you win but you don't want a Star Wars or a um, Disney bag and maybe you want one of those other ones that I showed and I'll send it to you unless it's one of my really bad ones then I might not because it's really bad but yeah, if you see something else that you like out of any of those um, yeah just say I'd prefer that you say you'd like the Disney bag or you'd like the Star Wars bag because that's going to make it easier when I pick a winner to know that, okay, I picked somebody that wants the Star Wars bag or, and now I'm going to pick one for the Disney bag kind of thing. Or, and then if either one of you, how is that going to work? I don't know. I'll work out the details of it. But when will I pick this? Let's pick a winner. Okay, let's shoot for St. Patrick's Day. How does that sound? So it's March 2nd now. That'll give you till the 17th. Um, I'll definitely close the giveaway on the 17th. I don't know if I'll actually make the video and announce it, but I will put the video is going to be closed on, on uh, March 17th. So, all right, guys, we're at 51 minutes. I have made this a really long video, so I'm going to uh, say goodbye and thank you again so much for making all your videos. I love them all, and I love that you spend time with me, and happy stitching. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.